today we're going to be doing something a little bit differently. We're going to be doing a um, how to play double bubble composition. I have watched through some of this game. Um, I want to give my thoughts on what makes double bubble a strong composition and kind of help you guys understand how this composition is played. Um, before we get into this, I just want to say quickly, I've opened up a Patreon account where um, you can get access to my client coaching VODs, um, pro player reviews, um, hero tier lists, meta reports, all while being able to support me and my channel. If you do want to go over, ahead, go over and check that out, check the link down in the description. Um, let's get into this then. So obviously here we have uh, Dallas Fuel versus Shanghai. Currently in this match, it's 2-1. Now this is a very, very important map um, here because this is Gibraltar, right? Gibraltar is known as a map with a lot of different various high grounds that you can play from. Um, and that is kind of one of the strengths of this composition and it's what makes this composition so strong is if you can play it on maps where you have high ground control it really enables a lot of various different parts of the composition the ana is enabled and i'm going to be pausing a lot here sorry about that but i need to explain myself before we get into this and watch because there's going to be a lot to talk about so the ana obviously is someone who is enabled by being on high ground if she can be on a good high ground position she has good line of sight so anna is a very very important person to set up on top Zarya is also another person that's very, very important setup on top. If Zarya is playing on low ground, she's very vulnerable and she's punishable. So Zarya also was one of these characters that wants to be on high ground where she can bubble. She has good line of sight with the bubble. And she has that high ground, which is also providing her form of safety. So we see here on Sol's attack, they've instantly TP'd out onto the left side and they're starting to take the high ground. You can see that two U's on the high ground um they are playing this with a they're playing this with a sombra and they're playing this with an echo echo and sombra um two dps that are very flexible in this song in this composition you're going to see the sombra playing quite um defensively she's going to be playing to just farm emp look for hacks and try and punish people with the hacks um the echo will also be playing very defensively she's Echo's just going to be playing defensively, trying to farm that uh, clone, and just trying to control position best she can. As you can see, Prophet here is playing this kind of angle here where he's able to just spam the, the DPS of, of fuel out. Now, one thing we've seen here is we've seen Fearless jump in. So Fearless has jumped in. In this composition, the, one of the win conditions is um, enabling your Zarya. So... The way that you enable Zarya in this composition is, is by um, your Winston going in, farming energy for the Zarya, but mostly trying to survive and get out. Fearless is going in to first farm, farm his Primal and also to give energy towards Hanbin. Now, the problem here is that I believe uh, Fearless went in and I think he got booped away. And, and now the thing is with him committing his leap on the engage here is that he now has no way of getting out here. So any boop that comes onto him he might potentially get punished. Um, so I don't particularly like this jump by Fearless because it's just too aggressive. Like I want to see Fearless dropping down from positions, trying to farm his primal there. Um, and then you saving his leap where he can jump back. Um, so one win condition, like I said, is, is getting your Zarya high energy and also farming that, that primal. Now Fearless goes very aggressive, which really opens up the top of the position, the top of the map here for the soul to start taking this, this position. And we're gonna see we're gonna see most of Soul on the high ground here. You can see Zarya's above us, Briggs above us. Um Winston's also Winston's now pushing payload, but Soul have rotated now around and they've taken inside of this server room. So the reason being is this this is a very, very good position for for um creative. He has access from here on all of he has vision all of the point here. Um, and this is also a very good position where um, Animo can peel really nicely inside this room. Now, the other thing, I'm so sorry we're pausing a lot. I know people get triggered when I'm pausing, but I need to explain this to everybody so everyone, everybody understands. So this comp plays very slowly initially. It plays very slowly. The reason you take high grounds is so that you have that form of safety and you're able to farm your... Your Zarya energy, your primal, and the third thing you're looking to farm is your nano. 
this composition is all about playing off your win conditions. The win conditions are mostly playing slow until you get certain alts. And once you get those certain alts, that's when you can be aggressive. That's when you can go forward. So what we're going to see from both teams here is they're going to be looking to farm their nano. They're going to be looking to farm their primal. They're going to be looking to farm their Zarya energy. Once they get any of these three things, we're going to see them go very, very aggressively and get, sometimes give up their high ground position just to go forward and into them. Double bio from Repel. I don't think Repel's played poorly. I'm, I'm going to be real. And here we see Repel's getting pretty close to a nano here. So we are going to see, uh, we're going to see fuel go pretty aggressive soon. Nano coming up in five. They have nano now. We get the nano. Phyllis goes in. Really, really nice sleep there from, from creative. And, and Repel gets a nice sleep as well. Onto Fitz. Someone, oh, someone woke up Phyllis. And you see how um, when, when Dallas got that nano, they all just went forward aggressively. Like, even the Anna's there, even the Briggs there. People, everyone's just following up. This composition plays... This composition plays very, like, brawly. Um, you're playing high grounds until you farm certain ults, and once you get those ults, that's when you're going aggressive. A good hold there from, from Dallas. Dallas, even though Phyllis went in and died, um, they gave up the space, and they were holding further back, and they farmed nano quicker than, than Sol could. So they get this fight. So as you can see now, Dallas are putting a high price on this high ground. We see here, Ambin is on top. Sparkle's on top. Um, I'm assuming that Anna is also on top. They're taking and setting up a lot of people on these high grounds here where they can start to control this. And now on the side of Seoul, they're going to have to try and retake this, which is not an easy task. And if we look on the uh, we look right now, they have quite a few ults available. We got Pulse Bomb, EMP. This is a huge win condition. Um, obviously, the EMP is, is we all know how strong EMP is, um, especially when you combo that with uh, a Winston going in um, and potentially a lot of follow up from this very brawly, brawly composition. So. Soul right now have win uh Dallas right now have win conditions because they have certain alts that they can win with. And like I said, this composition is all about playing slow until you farm certain alts. Um the key alts we want to be looking out for is Primal. Uh Rally is another one you can go very aggressive with. Uh Nano. And then as long as your Zara is high energy, these are kind of the four alts that you're gonna go go aggressive with. Obviously, with EMP, you're also gonna look to go aggressive and and, and find a big EMP. Oh, Fitz has found his, his translocator. He takes it out. I think Doha is going to be okay, though. Interesting position there from uh, from Doha. Doha putting himself in, in a position where he can just see. Um, and obviously, he can defend this high ground. Right, like so want to come up through this high ground and when he's positioned here he's basically denying this whole position off from from soul coming up if they do come up he's going to emp and also hanbin is already ready here with the grab you can see that he's ready with the grab he finds a grab onto the rally and they hit a nade this is insane value actually so they trade grab for rally and they win the fight that is absolutely huge and you can see how much emphasis they're really putting on the high ground here it's extremely important this composition is so crucial that you play and you use the high grounds because if you're playing low ground with a Zarya, you don't have anywhere as anywhere near as much impact on the Zarya on the low ground as you would controlling these high grounds. And the other thing to note here is when they're controlling the high grounds, they have con complete control. You see how Sol have now given up trying to come high ground. They're walking low ground and Doha's going in with the EMP. I feel like they got bait, kind of baited here, though. Fitz is waiting for the EMP. Fitz is going to be looking here. And even though the even though Dallas missed the EMP, 
we can see here they still have a lot of these alts, alts online. Um, they still have a lot of these alts online. They have Primal, Nano coming up soon, and Rally. They have so many alts that they can be aggressive with here. So we're, yeah, we are going to see Dallas still go aggressive. It's hard to believe this comp is meta. Um, I'm not saying this composition is meta. I don't. I don't think it is going to be meta and played every on every map. I think this composition is is good on specific maps. I want to be clear about that. I think this composition is good on certain maps. For example, maps like Gibraltar where you have high ground control. Um, but I, I don't necessarily think this is going to be meta. One thing to note: this is a very very difficult composition to play. You need to have a lot of discipline. You need to have a solid understanding of how to play the comp. The comp plays very slowly until you start farming these certain alts and once you get those alts that's the go that's the trigger that's where you just say okay let's get in there let's go let's let's fight with these alts so we see here fuel have dropped with the rally they're going aggressive now with the rally and i'm assuming they're probably going to go at nano follow actually they're using rally primal so they're using two of these alts to go aggressive and you see how all of them are dropping here and they're just going aggressive this rally should be enough just to win the fight it's such a strong ult this gets repel. So all goes with a grab. And the EMP. They use grab and EMP, but they still they still lost that fight. Well it looks like they're losing. Yeah, I think they're losing. Yeah. That's a that's re that's terrible for Saul. That's that's absolutely terrible. So the reason that is so bad is because this competition has this competition has primary alts and secondary alts. So the primary alts we're looking at here, um, when I say primary, I mean the, the strongest alts of the composition. Rally is one of your primary alts. Grav is one of your primary alts. EMP is another one of your primary alts. These three are primary. Excuse my handwriting. These three are your primary alts. The secondary alts you have are going to be your clone, are going to be your primal, are going to be your nano. Let's actually switch. Yeah, we, we can. So these are going to be your secondary alts. Now, the reason these are your primary alts, the EMP, the grab, and the rally, is because firstly, they farm a little bit slower than your, your secondary alts. And mostly because your primary alts are the ultimates that are kind of your strongest alts that you can go with. They're the, typically the alts that you want to invest maybe one into a fight. If you invest more than one and you lose, it's incredibly, incredibly bad for you. Um, the, the primary alts are the alts that we can't afford to lose a fight with. Now the secondary alts are kind of the supplementary ultimates. Typically we want to go with one primary. So for example, we could go with EMP and we can go with nano for one fight. That would be a good plan for how we engage. Typically you want to use one primary ult and one secondary ult in this composition, mostly because that enables you to keep a good economy. And if you use more than one of your primaries for your next fight, you're going to have a problem. So you want to balance it out and make sure that each fight you're planning to use one primary, so either EMP, Grav, or Rally, and one secondary to win the fight. That should be your plan. Maybe you sometimes have to invest two, two secondaries, but you should never really have to invest two primary ults to win a fight. If you do, it's going to set you up for the next, the further, the future fights where you're going to be at a disadvantage. Okay, going back to it here. So going back to that, that's really, really bad for Sol. They invest EMP and Grav, and they lose the fight. Um, when I say they lose the fight, they are pushing payload here, but Fitz is going to be forced out soon. And Sol are in a situation where they're going to have to reset. Obviously, Dallas have the spawn advantage. So they're going to be setting up position now. I'm going to try and figure out. Okay, so we see here. Dallas have now set Hanbin up inside, inside server. Um, he could have set up, up maybe on, on top here. This would also have been good. But I think Dallas are just focusing on controlling the server room and forcing Sol to try and fight for it. Um, we can see here that 
Fearless is controlling blue box. This is a good position where he can drop down. Typically, when you see the way you see cooldowns here is the Zarya is positioned in a way where she can bubble when the Winston drops in. This is kind of, again, coming back to the first point I mentioned initially is getting your Zarya energy. The Winston is a big part of this. He's dropping in, farming his primal. Zarya gives the bubble. And I wonder if we can actually see the interaction here when he drops. Phyllis might not drop yet. Okay, we can't see what's going on. <laughs> Prophet has used clone. Prophet's going in. Phyllis has used bubble and he's he's peeling back now. I'm assuming he Hanbin's already given bubble. Yeah, Hanbin's pretty charged. I mean, if we go back to this fight, Dallas just had the ult advantage there, right? Like, if we look at that. They had a good amount of ults to work with here. Yeah, they got... They have Grav, EMP coming up soon, and Nano and Pulse. Like, and this is this goes back to the previous fight. This is why... This is really why... Um, why Soul, Soul struggled so much this fight. is because they didn't have any ults to work with, really. Uh, I mean, they have... Have Echo Clone, but like I said, Echo Clone is not a primary ult. Echo Clone is not an ult you can expect to consistently win a fight with. You know, it's good for disruption. But as you can see, you'll have one primary, which is the Grav. And then they also have an EMP as a follower, but the EMP is not even really needed. And, I mean, Jexy dies just before. Anno's get, getting zoned off with the by Primal. I know it doesn't really get too much value from Rally there. And so hold. Uh, Dallas hold. And I, I think partly because of a good hold from, uh, a really good hold from from Dallas. But that fight where they invested Grav and EMP and managed to lose there is is terrible. Um, I think they got kind of sucked into this chaos. They got sucked into the, the, the fuel's chaos when they were fighting down there. So again, that was pretty quick. We're probably going to see the same thing from, from Fuel on their attack now. They're going to focus on taking high grounds, and we're going to see the same from, from Sol. They are going to try and defend the high ground best they can. Dallas TPing across again. This gets 20%. That's really, really nice. And, and like the Sombras in this comp are mostly just trying to farm their EMP, right? They're farming EMP and then they're looking for the neutral win condition, is, which is through hacks. You see here, Doha's keeping some distance, just trying to farm that EMP. It's very ahead here, but mostly because he has a strong position as a defender. You kind of expect, you expect the defending team Sombra to farm faster than the attacking team just because of defenders have the position right go back here I missed quite a lot quite a lot there the prophet gets slept huge sleep from repel where, where is repel okay repels yeah he's right there phyllis jumps in phyllis trying to farm some emp you notice how actually how um both attacking teams decided to run the echo i think partly because Echo um, has a lot of space to work with on the attacking side. She has all of this space to kind of work with and operate in. She can play from these high grounds. She can spam anyone holding on this high ground here. Um, I think Echo makes a lot of sense. I think Echo is still good. I think Echo is undoubtedly still good. Um, and you do see some of the teams playing her at the moment. Now, even the Nexus Cup, she's still getting quite a bit of good playtime. Um, not quite as much as we're seeing in Contenders, but... She is getting quite a bit of playtime. Um, on the side of the defending team here, it kind of makes more sense, right? Because she has less room and space to operate with on this defending side because of the the, the cliff um, roof above where Fitz is now. It's a bit a bit lower, so she's not able to get as much space um, for spamming and farming that that clone. And we see because of that pick onto Profit, Sol have to give up so much space here, which is really, really bad. Um, like I've said many times here, this composition relies on having position. And when they lose one, 
naturally Seoul had to give up space here and, and concede that space, which is, is just terrible for them. Um, because we can see here that that Hanbin is set up in a really nice position. Hanbin starting to walk across. They're st starting to try and take position. And again here, Dallas are faster to farm this nano, which is one of the key engaged uh, cooldowns. None of these teams are engaging unless they have a certain ult. Fitz does is getting close to EMP, but because Dallas have that nano so quickly, they're just going to go quickly here. They're going to go in aggressive with this this nano. And you can see Phyllis just needs just goes ham when he has that nano. There's nothing that they can really do to stop him. He just manages to get away. I say that, and they get a hack and almost manage to punish him. But he farmed, look how much of his primal he's farmed there. He's farmed like almost 45%. Soul actually cutting back really nicely there. Yep, they're going aggressive. He gets the Zarya bubble in. Soul looked ready for this. But did I also miss that? Was the was the Brig in there as well? Yeah, Brig was in there, I think, right? Like Brig was in there aggressive. Who is that? Oh, okay, that was that was uh, Doha slept. I think Jexe must have gotten picked off here on his way in. So Soul, Soul actually react really well there. They don't use any ults. They just peel back. And they force Nano out. They, they win the fight without using any ults. They force Nano out. So Soul are in a pretty good position now, actually. Um, the fact that they have their AMP coming up, they have the Nano available. They are the ones in the driving seat as, as of right now. Doha 25% off his EMP. But we're going to see, I'm, I think we're going to see that Soul go pretty aggressive here with the, the EMP. Goes for the hack, manual hack. Wow, okay. Wow. Okay, I think... I think they're trying to be greedy here, actually. I think they're trying to be really greedy. They go for a manual hack. You see, Jester gets the bubble in. 2U is, is on the high ground. Um... We can see two U's on this high ground here. Up here, two U. Goes for the manual. Rappel get Rappel gets the the Zarya bubble. Okay, I think I think what happened here is Gesture is expecting to get his primal here. That's why he's going so aggressive because he commits in there with the leap right, meaning he's not. Almost no way of getting out for another six seconds. So I think he's going so aggressive here because he has that. He thinks he's going to get that primal. He's, he's confident he's going to get the primal for this fight. I would have uh, actually liked. For, I, I would have liked for Fitz to be a little more defensive here with the EMP and just wait until Soul. Uh, wait until Fuel try and get into a position where they can cross because that's ultimately what. This composition is all about. They, this composition needs to get in position first or try and take position. So the advantage that Sol have is that they can just wait until they make a rotation. And during the rotation, they can go for this EMP. Dallas split off a lot there. Goes for the EMP. Gets a huge EMP. And there's a pulse bomb to finish off. Sol looking pretty good actually right now. All looking pretty good. I, I I feel like this player was a little bit greedy. Them not using anything there, just going to try and four sorts and then going with the primal. But Sparkle goes with a clone, as we can see here. Fitz is waiting. Fitz, do you have rally? They also go with rally. You all have no option. They need to win this fight, right? Uh, sorry, Seoul have no option. They need to win this fight. Check say. So they look at. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we. So we see why they lose, right? So even though. Even though Seoul win this fight, look at how much they used. 
one primary, two primary, three primary, one secondary. They use three primary ults and one secondary ult. And so on the side of fuel now, they're just going to be happy with this because they have one primary coming up, two primaries coming up, and one primary already available. So really, really poor ult economy there from Seoul. I think that's probably going to be why they might end up losing this now. They need to pull out a miracle here, an absolute miracle to win this now. And one thing to note is they, because they've used so much here, and because fuel have so much, their fuel doesn't even need to care about position that that much anymore because they have rally to engage. They have EMP. So if if Dynasty drop and try and fight them, that EMP is kind of being used as a defensive ult right now because Seoul know that if they engage into Dallas, they're gonna get six man EMP. The game is over. No coming back from that. So that's why we see. Dallas right now, just positioning as a group, they're not even caring about, about high ground because they have Rally and they have EMP. And we see here, Doha's just waiting for his moment. They're just playing around point. And Seoul know this. Seoul know they're in such a, a, a tough spot here. I'm just going to EMP the Winston, yeah. They EMP Winston. Dallas gets the Nano. Fitz has EMP as well now. Fitz farmed EMP so quickly. Wow. Look at that. He literally farmed it in one fight. That's insane. So he's on 45%. Yep, Dallas decided to just drop down and take low ground. Start pushing low ground. Fitz still farming. A soul playing this. Like honestly, giving the circ given the circumstances, Seoul playing this pretty well. Like they can, they have to give all of the space here to to Dallas, right? Because if they engage, they are just they're done. The only win condition that Seoul have is to play extremely slow and play to farm this EMP um, from Fitz, and that's essentially what they do. Jesse goes in, as Jesse goes in, Fearless goes in, Fearless gets the bubble. EMP comes in from Seoul as well. I think because of how many ults Dallas had, this might just be over. Buckle gets a pick. There we go. So, so both teams looking pretty good. I think overall Seoul, they kind of whiffed there on the ult economy on this fight where they invested where they invested, when they invested uh, EMP, Grav, Rally, and Pulse. This was the fight that really cost Seoul. Um, to give credit to Seoul, though, they played this fight quite well. They played to try and survive. They played to their win condition, right? They knew that Dallas had the win condition of just playing around point with the Rally, playing around point with the EMP, and just pushing this pillar. They kind of use this EMP as a range where if anyone comes into that range and, and if, if Soul try and engage into that, they just die. So I like I like the way that I like the way that Soul played this, but unfortunately when there's this many ults on the board from from Dallas, it's always going to be a tall order to win here. Um but overall pretty pretty good stuff from Dallas. Like I think Seoul could have won this had they played better. Um, especially when it comes to the economy there. But both teams playing the composition pretty decently. Like they, they seem to have a good understanding of how to play. Um, just to summarize how you play this composition. This composition is all about high grounds. Right? So the first thing you want to take high grounds. The people you want to set up on the high grounds are your... Rosaria, which is part of the core. Your Anna, which is part of the core. Your Brig. This is kind of the core here. These three are the core. Mostly these people are staying together. Typically, the best DPS you can run with this composition is 
DPS that are independent and they don't necessarily need a lot of support from your from your core. DPS, we can see here, Sombra is a very good pick. Sombra is very good mostly because she also plays into the win condition of this composition. Double Bubble is a very, very slow composition. You're playing slow until you start getting certain ultimates online. Once you get the ultimates, that's when it's like a, a flick of the switch and the composition goes very, very aggressive. Sombra is a very good DPS to play with this because you farm, obviously, your EMP and one of the strongest ultimates in the game. Uh, and you can also pair that with something like a Tracer or an Echo. Echo is also very good. Um, I think the clone is really, really nice. You can go for like double Winston Primal Engages, which can be unbearable to deal with. Now, the win conditions of this composition, like I mentioned a couple of times, farm your Zarya energy. You need energy on Zarya for this composition to work. Zarya is kind of one of the centerpieces of this composition and your Zarya needs to have energy. The reason you're positioning your Zarya on the high ground is so that you have that safety of being able to use bubble if you're taking damage. And then obviously if you're on the high ground, you're a lot more, you're a lot less vulnerable, right? Because high ground, basically you have a lot more um, defensive options for cover and you can avoid the enemies. Um, you're not as exposed as being on low grounds. So your win conditions farm your, your Zarya energy. And the way you can do this is Winston dropping in, getting the bubble, and then Winston getting out. This leads me, leads me to my second point. Farm your primal. Farming your primal is important because this is one of your key secondary ultimates that you can use to be aggressive and go forward into the enemy team. Um, so farming your primal is also very, very important. And so good synergy be between your Winston and Zarya is going to be important. Your, your Winston is not diving here. He's not diving. That's the key thing I want to mention. He's never diving in. He's mostly dropping down and pressuring, zapping, and then he's jumping back with the bubble. Okay. As we mentioned, this composition is all about taking high ground. So typically you're going to have your Ana positioned on high ground. Your Zarya is maybe going to be, going to be on blue box. Um, what we saw most of the time here was the teams were trying to control um, inside server room. This is mostly so that the attacking team could not rate, rotate into so, uh, rotate into server room and take server. Um, so we see here like the, the Zarya would be playing here and they would be looking to pressure and be aggressive when the enemies try to take this position. Obviously the Winston, the way that Winston gets energy, he plays in a position where he can typically drop down. He will get the Zarya bubble, he'll play, to, he'll zap, he'll zap, he'll zap. He will jump out once the, the Zarya bubble is cleansed. And that achieves two things. It farms your Nano. It farms your Primal. Three things. And it farms your, your Zarya energy. So that's one of the one of the ways you do this. Um, this comp is all about playing to farm those. Now, when you have those ults aggressively, you can look to start grouping up together as a team and going aggressive forward, obviously with the Nano. Um, but typically if you can use the high grounds, this is very good. Um, we saw the defensive soul. They went aggressive here. The Winston jumped in, they had the Sombra in the back and they were attacking like this, right? In a position where the Zarya can bubble in, the Zarya can bubble someone in and they have, Anna has line of sight onto the dive. Anna can obviously look for the nades. This is a very, very good situation to, to be engaging. So mostly this composition is, is pretty much a heavy, heavy alt composition. You play very slow initially. You play to build those ultimates. Once you have those ults available, that's when you look to go more aggressive. That's when you can look to death ball and, and engage in. Um, make sure that when you go for, when you make a plan for the fight, try not to use more than two primary ults. If you use more than two primary ults, you're going to run into the same problems that Sol had. If you invest too many primary ults, you're going to have you're going to probably win the fight, but the next fight is going to be very, very tough for you. So try and go with one primary, one to two secondaries, and then you're going to set up a good economy for the first, second, third, and fourth fight. And you're going to be able to rotate. One of the strengths of this composition is if you do start getting your economy online and you do manage to rotate properly, you're going to be relatively unstoppable if you're on these high grounds. Um, yeah, I think that was most mostly like everything about this composition. 
Um, it to recap, high grounds. Play slow until you farm alts. Once you farm the alts, that's when you can look to pull the trigger and go very aggressively. Um, try not to invest more than two primary alts. If you invest more than two, you're going to have a very, very tough second, third, fourth fight because you're then behind on the alt economy. So one primary, one to two secondaries, and be aggressive when you have the alts. If you don't have alts, play slow, control the high grounds, focus on controlling the top, like to farm your, your alts.